Welcome back to Inside Ambition. I'm Alexander George, and today I'm talking to Emma and Alicia. They're with Active Minds, and they're here to tell us a little bit about the work that they do. Hi, Emma. Hi, Alicia. How are you guys? Hi, Alex. Um, Hi. <laughs> why don't you guys start by just introducing yourselves, your year, and what you do in Active Minds? Um, I'm Emma, I'm a sophomore, and I'm the incoming president for Active Minds. I'm Alicia, I'm a pre-junior, and I'm the treasurer of Active Minds. Well, thank you guys so much for asking to be on our show. We love to feature student orgs on our program. For our audience who don't know who Active Minds is and what you guys do, could you elaborate on what you do as a student org? Sure. Um, yeah, so we're an on-campus organization, and we are affiliated with the national organization Active Minds. And basically, we work to fight the stigma that's against mental illnesses. And um, so we, we work on, like, uh, mental illness, um, like, getting people, like, know, to know what it is about. So how do you guys feel like mental illness, mental health, how is that talked about at Drexel, and how do you think it could be made better? I don't know if it's really being talked about enough, to be honest. I think it's something that's still really stigmatized in a lot of communities, including Drexel. And um, it's cool to see that there are some conversations going on, but I think we need to normalize it as much as we can, just the same way we normalize talking about physical health. What are some steps that Active Minds is taking to normalize uh, mental health and, and that conversation on Drexel's campus? Recently, we uh, our members actually participated in QPR training. Um, so that's a it's a suicide awareness uh, training assessment. So we could uh, like help our peers who we who we think are expecting like some sort of like depressive episodes or like suicidal thoughts. So that was like a really nice training to start like to start having the kind of conversations with. So that was like a big step forward. And QPR, for those who don't know, stands for Question, Persuade, Refer, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how do you feel, what do you guys feel like the counseling center's role in student life is? And do you wish they had a bigger role, a stronger role, or that students were more willing to go? How do you guys feel, um, students feel about the counseling center at Drexel? I think the counseling center, kind of in general with mental health, Counseling has been seen as a crisis resource and students, I think a lot of times sometimes don't feel as comfortable going to the counseling center um, until they feel like there's something really serious going on. So Active Minds' role is kind of to bring the resources to the students and say, this is what's available to you. These are the hours. This is some of the services that it provides, but also to kind of meet students in the middle and be like, if this is not the route you want to go with mental, your mental health, or, you know, if you don't feel like you want to go to the counseling center, um, that we can find other ways to work on mental health and teach each other how to regulate our emotions and our behavior way that makes it you know healthy for everyone what are some things that you guys have planned as an org to help facilitate that conversation in this upcoming year so we are actually planning on advertising the counseling center as much as we can on social media and through outlets like yours inside ambition and then on top of that we're, we're working with like the counselors um the counselors very closely like barbara ankles are advisors who are working with her very closely and like trying to get students to be more aware of like the resources that are available to them. We did have um, Scott Sokolowski from the Counseling Center on our show a few weeks back, but could you guys elaborate a little bit about what resources you think are most valuable at the Counseling Center? There are a lot of different types of resources and with the coronavirus, I think he mentioned this in the interview, but it is to have um, therapy just because of the state lines, but um, there are group workshops and there's individual workshops that are able to be done. Um, I also thought it was really great that there is a case manager. Um, so, you know, if the counseling center isn't the place for you, um, there's someone who's 
continues to reach out to you and make sure and check up on you and make sure you're finding another therapist outside of Drexel. So I really like the pictures of the counseling center. If students want to get involved and if they want to be a part of Active Minds or if they're looking for their own mental health resources on campus, what do you, what advice do you have for them? You can reach out to us through Dragon Link. Oh, we're on Dragon Link. We're on Instagram and Facebook. So if you want to get involved in our organization and we have leadership positions open, uh, you can always shoot us an email or DM us on Instagram. And then for, and there's also, uh, if you go on the Counseling Center website, if you're looking for mental health resources, I think that's a really good idea to do too. Emma, I know that you mentioned before we started this call that Active Minds is trying to initiate more work with peer-to-peer -peer counseling. Can you talk a little bit about what that might look like? Totally. So, um, like Alicia mentioned, QPR is part of that initiative, but there also is something kind of um, that another Active Minds chapter, I believe in California, came up with called VAR, which stands for Validate, Appreciate, and Refer. And that is for non-crisis situations. So it's just when you see someone who might be having a hard day or, you know, struggling with academics or had a, you know, going through a breakup or something like that, that doesn't necessarily um, call for, you know, crisis intervention, but just a way to make sure we're all there for each other and everyone's feeling validated and you know i think personally and i think a lot of students feel this way people don't know how to navigate when they see someone upset um and so having kind of like a concrete tool to make sure uh you kind of know how to have that conversation when you see someone even someone you may not know um feeling upset is so important is there anything else that you guys want students to know before we wrap? We're a really fun club. Um, I honestly, it's opened my eyes personally. Um, I struggle with mental health issues and going to from high school where I was really stigmatized and being able to join this organization in college um, was really validating and empowering to be able to like work on those issues. So, yeah. And Alicia, what about you? Um, so yeah, I honestly, I say, I'm going to say like, if you're interested, you should like come and join us and it's like a really fun, we're like a family kind of thing. Um, so we have like a few board members and if you're interested in joining the board, you can reach out to us or if you want to be part of like the larger organization itself without the leadership position, send us an email and we'll add you to the emailing list. We have like a lot of fun uh, events planned for if we go back to school um, next year, we'll keep you updated on that. Perfect. Well, thank you guys so much again for reaching out to our show to promote your org. I love the work that you're doing and I really appreciate you guys speaking on our platform. Thank you for having us. If you guys want to see more content like this, make sure you like and comment below. You can subscribe to our channel, Drexel Television, and make sure to follow Active Minds on Instagram as well as our Instagram at inside underscore ambition. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe and we'll see you soon.